<laughs> um, I am thrilled to have um, I am thrilled to have uh, Chris and Sam here with me live this week. Round of applause for Chris and Sam live this week in the room with us. Um, it's actually been quite nice though. We've been here on, oh, Sam gave me a haircut. So I have been touched today. Isn't that nice? Look at that. In quarantine haircut. <laughs> Some of you are so much less- Good job, Thanks. Sam. Thanks. Very few of you are appropriately impressed, um, but this is worthy of appropriate impressed. Um, well done, Sam, thank you. Uh, and then- um, uh, Chris, your haircut looks nice too. Always <laughs> does. <laughs> Uh, I am going to have Sam and Chris that are going to give the demos and we'll also have plenty of useful information from a tips uh, perspective and then I'm going to be able to give you voice to whatever you're doing and, uh, and diagnostics and we'll also be able to answer questions. So uh, the three of us are going to navigate through this. Um, this is a complicated class, so there's very likely going to be times that you might have to rest. And um, uh, Chris and Patty, I'm going to have you turn. I'm going to turn one of those off. Uh, but uh, as you um, get stuck along the way, feel free to just turn to the computer and look at Chris and Sam doing whatever the thing is and then jump back in when you're ready for it. There's a number of things tonight that might not be right for you and your partner to participate in. So either taking a modification that stays within the same vein or completely modifying it so that you're doing um, uh, something that is appropriate for the uh, level of experience so that we're not risking injury in, in you know, to, to just try to execute a single posture or transition. So just be really mindful that if something sounds like, oh, that's a little nuts, is that what he means? The answer is probably yes, that, that is what I mean, but also that yes, it is nuts. So it doesn't mean that you should just do it without thinking about it. So please go through that evaluative process for each thing um, with each other before you uh, attempt it um, physically. Make sense? I see some thumbs. Good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, the way the class works is, is that for the first chunk of the class, what's going to happen is, is I will talk through a sequence of poses and transitions, and you all are going to execute them. Uh, at the end of that, we'll ask questions on the entire sequence and review any questions that we have, and then we'll move on to some newer content. But the first thing that I want to make sure that we are doing well is that we're familiar with our parameters in the space that, that we're physically in. So making sure that we have no obstacles that we're going to touch on the way to the ground. So if there's anything that's in the way that we might hit, please move that out of the way. Things like that red yoga ball might be far enough away that it's not an issue. But like if that would be something that you would come down on just to really get your area clear of all of those things. And then also make sure that you have an area to land in all of the directions so that you have a good periphery around you that is a clean and clear area to come down to the ground through. And that's actually the first thing we're going to do is I would like everyone to go into some shoulder stands and come out of them as a walkover, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and just look at a few walkovers from shoulder stand. As I move out of the way, Chris and Sam will now show front plank to a shoulder stand, and from that shoulder stand that there's a walk over the base's head, they'll come around again and look at a different angle this time. They're going to go from front plank to shoulder stand. There'll be a little bit of a rotation, and then that walks out over the base's head at an angle. And I want everyone to do that in a number of angles that we can start to establish a safe perimeter to land in. All of this is a landing area for us and that we can move through it safely. So give it a shot. Oh, I'm also very appreciative for those of you that um, uh, put you and your partner's name in your screen, if you can change your screen name. Uh, that way I won't address everyone just as Charlie, but if Charlie, if y'all don't get the rest of your people in your screen, I'm just gonna call you all Charlie. 
which can be fine, but if you want to change your name, I really like Tyler and Riley. Thank you for putting two names down. Patty, I know Chris pretty well. Yeah, Sam and Chris did not put Lux in the screen, so it's like I get no credit. Looking good, all looking good. Nice. All right, one or two more, and we'll get on with our flow. Also, though I can't see you, it's nice to have you here, Kat. And then Kat, also you can unmute yourself with any questions you have along the way. Hey, thanks. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? Not yet? All right, we got Melissa ready. And then Austin, do you have the ability to turn your head toward the camera? That way it's nice and uniform and I can see everybody in the same orientation. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And I see Austin does not care to share names. That's okay, Danielle, it's okay, it's fine. Um, all right, y'all ready? Tyler and Riley, good luck, good luck. Good luck. Everyone, we're going to start off in a front plank. And then Charlie, Laura, Elsa, you are going to manage your time as we spoke about. Yes? Cool. All right. In that front plank, we're going to find a range of motion. With that range of motion, we will bend and extend and rotate. Trying to get out of the way here, but I gotta stay close enough to the microphone. <laughs> Excellent. From front plank, we're gonna go to shoulder stand. From shoulder stand, we're gonna go to back plank. Looking good, except for uh, Tyler and Riley, you ended up in a reverse back plank. So a back plank. And then back plank to reverse shoulder stand to front plank. Remember base is that when we make contact with our flyers, we have extended legs as we're catching that front plank initially. But the first thing we do as soon as that contact is made is we bend our knees and that's gonna help bring our flyers into balance over our center. Front plank is where we're meeting. Front plank, we're gonna go to a reverse shoulder stand all the way to front plank. Front plank, reverse shoulder stand, front plank. And then do that in each direction, front plank, reverse shoulder stand, front plank in each direction. Nice footwork there, Jay. Excellent. Let's go front plank shoulder stand. And in this shoulder stand, we're going to have the bases bend their arms, bring the flyer all the way down to the sternum, and then extend the arms back up. And then we're going to bring the flyer down to the side of our torso by our ribs and do that on each side. So go through a range of motion of up and down. And then from there, flyers are going to take their knees and bring them to their elbows and back up to extension. Okay. 
and then we'll rotate to back leg. Paula turned out just a little too soon. Excellent. From back plank, we're going to go shoulder stand to back plank again. And do that in each direction. John Tamara, y'all all right? Thumbs up, all right. In that back plank, let's all meet in a back plank. In that back plank, I want all flyers looking at their toes. Flyers, can you see your toes? Excellent, I want you to keep your eyes on your toes. Never let your eyes come off your toes. Bring your arms overhead and let's step to star without losing sight of your toes. Don't let him go, don't let him go. Nice, nice, nice. Excellent, from star we're gonna go to front plank and then back to star and back to front plank. Do this a number of times and there are a few ways that we can get there. So you can rotate and step in front of the body, you can rotate and step behind the body, you can step to the same side shoulder or the opposite side shoulder. You can rotate internally or externally. You end up with a bunch of different variations. So from hips to shoulders, hips to shoulders, hips to shoulders, hips to shoulders. Looking good, Chris and Sam. No? Kind of making fun of all of us. Nice, 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 and we'll meet in a star. In star, I want everyone to step their feet forward so that we have our flyers closer to our ankles, closer to our heels. And we're gonna take this star and go free. In your free star, we're going to bring our arms up by our hips and our legs together. Again, all of this is only if it feels safe for you. If it does not, please take all the modifications you need. Keep your arms connected, keep your legs wide, do as you need. But if we do have this, arms free, arms up by the hips, legs together position, the next thing we're going to do is bring our legs to a tuck. And from that tuck, nice work, Chris and Patty, we're going to go to a pike. Pike his legs together, Rochelle. Yeah, that's the right reaction. That's the right reaction. With our legs together, we will open up those legs and go to a straddle. And a straddle has no pike in it. So this should be with our hips all the way extended and our legs wide. And then we bring our legs together for what we call straight. And then we're gonna do that again. We're gonna go tuck, pike, straddle, and straight. Tuck, pike, straddle, straight. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And now let's bring our arms out to a T flyers. 
And we're gonna do our best to not touch our feet, but instead to bring our foot to our hand. So first let's do this on the same side, right foot to right hand, and then left foot to left hand. Try to not raise your arm, try to only lower your leg. Linnea. Good on that side, on that side. Your second side wants to raise your arm, whereas your first side, your arm is very well disciplined. <laughs> it's good, it's good. And then let's do it in a cross. So we're gonna bring our right foot to our left hand and then our left foot to our right hand, one at a time. Still, again, trying to work with it free, but if that doesn't work for you, you can do this with your arms connected. Don't worry. Resting is good, watching is good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And then from there, we're going to move to a foot to hand. In our foot to hand, unless you're John and Tamara, the rest of you, I want to rotate 90 degrees. Yeah, you're already good. In our foot to hand, we will go extended and bend, extended and bend, extended and bend, extended and bend. And I was speaking of the bases arms more than anything else here. You can do this both arms at the same time, or you can do this one at a time in a stair stepper. Um, Tyler Riley, it's, uh, it's also fine to hold on to the base's feet as you're coming to extension back and forth, and really anyone. I just see y'all resting or maybe regripping and chalking. And then let's try our pistons. Our pistons are really fucking hard for those of you that haven't played with these yet. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna extend one side and you're gonna bend the opposite. And then you're going to take and you're going to do the opposite with them. You're going to extend the one while you bend the other. And you're going to do this where weight is in both arms and both legs at the same time. And you are trying to maintain constant pressure in them and hit the elbow on the ground while the other elbow hits straight at the same time. So this should be a constant amount of work for both arms and legs at all times. Excellent. From there, let's turn back 90 degrees, heads toward the camera. Tyler, Riley, y'all are already there. Uh, actually, you can turn 90 degrees to the camera, that'd be great. From there, what we're going to do is, is we're going to come to an extended foot to hand and flyers are going to come to a squat. And in that squat, flyers are going to lean their weight to one side and extend the opposite leg. You can hold on to the base's foot here if you need. And then do that on the second side, bring that leg back in, shift the squat over to the second side and extend the first leg. Nice bail, nice bail, good job. Excellent, excellent, excellent. From there, flyers, arms behind your back. Holding on to your opposite elbows, wrists or hands. And then stand up and then fold forward to start. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. 
looking good. Austin, it is my second favorite side of you. <laughs> there we go. Nice. All right. From there, we'll take a hand to hand grip. In that hand to hand grip, we're going to try to keep our legs together, flyers. And we're going to try to not pike at all. You can stay straight, or you can even turn this a bit into an arch, or you can actually even exaggerate this into an arch. But from here, we're going to swan dive down to a reverse front plank. Try to keep your feet lifted as you bring your hips down, flyers. And while that's not so bad, we're going to see if we can do the same exact thing on the way up. We're going to try to keep our legs together, flyers, and we're going to lead with our heels, and we're going to come back into our star. Try not to pike. Try to really peel into the inversion. It's tough to do without letting a stag or a pike come in. In star, we're going to try one more time down to that reverse front plank. And from there, we'll rotate to reverse star. In our reverse star, we're going to play with our model in reverse stars. So we're going to do whatever version of that is appropriate for us. For some of us, it might be that we're holding on to both legs. For some of us, it might be that we are, uh, Chris and Sam, can you rotate 90? Or is that funky for your freeze? Um, for some of us, it's going to be that we'll have two arms on one of our bases leg, and then we'll take turns releasing the inside arm, regripping it, and releasing the outside arm and regripping it. Some of us are also playing with a free reverse star, and a very few of us are playing with a free model in reverse star. But this is your time to play with whatever variation of reverse star is uh, appropriate for you. Pretty impressive stuff, right, Tyler? Right? Look at these people. They're doing amazing things. Take just another moment here. All right. From there, I want us to make a transition that uh, goes from a reverse star to a shoulder stand. From shoulder stand, let's take a moment and just shift our weight to one side. And then we'll go through center to the second side. And do that twice on each side. What do you mean?
Sorry, I missed that last cue. Uh, just to do it a couple of times on each side, monolimb shoulder stand, or moving toward a monolimb shoulder stand on either side. Nice work. Melissa, you're looking strong. Bernard, you're looking strong too, but you know. All right, from there, let's take and rotate it. We're gonna go from shoulder stand to star, back to shoulder stand. Excellent, excellent, excellent. From shoulder stand, we'll rotate to back plank. And from back plank, I know people will be upset with me if I don't at least give people some fireballs. So let's look at a couple of fireballs in either direction. For those of you that have been practicing for a while with these and really just are like, ah, you know, fireballs, I just need a little more. You can do these with pikes instead of tucks and do fire pikes rather than fireballs. Shoulder okay, Linnea? Nice effort. That's some hard work you get out tomorrow. Good landing. All right. On your last one, feel free to do a walkover, make it fancy. Release the glitter bombs. As long as they're not in my house. How's the audio? Y'all can hear okay? Seems like it. You're, you're moving with the words. And how about that Chris and Sam, right? A round of applause. <laughs> Most people are like, I didn't see them at all. <laughs> What do you think, Riley? Pretty good? Get a little sweat on? Nice. All right. Um, God, I really want to demo something, so we'll see. Maybe I feel okay to demo something. Don't hurt me back. I know, right? All right, so I just took a, a, a step back from the uh, microphone. Can everyone still hear okay? All right, questions? Yeah. Unmute yourselves to ask questions. You can just hit your space bar, Patty. She's on mobile, maybe? Patty, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, will you unmute them? Anyone else questions? Yeah, can we uh, talk about the uh, fine tunement of going from reverse star into. Uh, 
A reverse turn for what? Shoulder stand. Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. I had the same question. Reverse star to shoulder stand. The shoulder stand reverse star star reverse shoulder. Cool. Patty, you're muted now. Patty. Um. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's your question? Okay. Uh, shoulder stand to star. Okay. Yeah. Just any. That's like the common one. Shoulder stand to star. That's the one. And shoulder stand to reverse star. Please. And shoulder stand to reverse star. Okay. Or reverse star to shoulder. It's so, okay. We're going to use the same principles for all of those. Anything else? That's it. Just shoulder stand on hands and then inversions on feet. Okay. So essentially what we have is we have the, um, the model limb shoulder stands is kind of that moment where we get to learn to shift our weight from one point of connection to the next and trying to utilize those moments where we have only the mono limbs as an opportunity to bring in support to the next um, uh, point of contact. So we should be able to look at this a couple of ways. Yeah, let's go reverse start a shoulder stand and then let's turn your head this way. Okay. So for reverse char, reverse start a shoulder stand, we can do it a couple of ways. We can be here and I can shift off to one side and free a shoulder. And then the base is going to bend the knee, reach for the shoulder. And then I look at that new arm and I say, okay, well, that's now my mono limb balance on this one side. And that frees the foot on the other side. And then the hand comes in and then I shift to even the weight out. Alternatively, you can do it all at the same time where you bring two hands and two feet to just two shoulders. The bigger the feet and the smaller the shoulders, the more difficult this is. But essentially what we're looking for is this moment here where I as a flyer am touching the legs and the arms of the base. I transition from the legs to the arms and then the base presses the arms away as they actively are retracting their legs out of there. So it's an active flexibility that the legs are moving out as the arms are coming into extension. Make sense? Questions on that one? Okay, let's just give that a try. If you're familiar with one of the methods, use the other as well as the one. And, um, and if you haven't tried one of those methods, uh, give at least one of them a try. Cool. And thank you, Jay. So now I would say that, um, that like if Sam, if you look at the two columns on the left, mm -hmm. and then Chris, you look at the two on the right, mm -hmm. and then I'll just look at all of them. <laughs> Um, and then from there, we can see who needs some help. <laughs> you all right, Layla? <laughs> Look like you're losing your mind a little there. All of their names were up. How did they go away? How's it going? They stayed up. There was something that like got stuck. It was really nice. <laughs> yeah, y'all are looking great. So you know, John's feet are enormous, so he tried to choke me with his thumb. 
<laughs> Did you say thank you? <laughs> All right, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think I mentioned it's kind of avoid curvature of the center body and standing on long gauge will make harder stuff easier in the future. Yeah. But that looks good. More something I usually do on the Thursday class, mm -hmm. but uh, you're looking at the red screen. Do that one and then um, on top of that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Any other questions there? People are coming in. Cool. All right, so let's take a look at the rotation from uh, shoulder stand to star. So it's like very similar, except for the last one was more straightforward. This one has a twist in it. Um, yeah. Um, from start to shoulder stand. Yeah, this is fine. And then, uh, yeah. All right, we all ready? So from star here, now we have to be a little bit predictive with where the support's going to be and how we're going to make access to it. So as the base starts to bend the leg, they're going to start to establish a bit of a rotation. And you see, even in this moment here, a one foot comes off the shoulder, a one foot comes off the shoulder, and I shift the weight onto this one. And as Chris was pointing out, I want to not dump my side body too much, I want to stay elongated over it. As this arm comes into play, I'm going to shift my arms into it, and I'm going to try to lift my weight onto that shoulder, and I'm going to reach around for the opposite arm. We'll do it a little bit more in real time in a moment, but as I reach around for that opposite arm, I can leverage pressure down through this arm to create space between the foot and the shoulder on that side, making space for the new hand coming in. All right, so take a look for that. get ourselves into position. First part of the rotation starts to happen. Shifting the weight over there, I reach through and I push through that arm to free the foot as we're moving into the new shoulder to hand connection. Microphone work through all of that? Cool. You want, me to, go back. You want to see it one more time here? Thumbs up. All right, take a look at it again. Uh, now go back. Yeah. Oh. Are you gonna show the other way on another round? No, no, no. We'll go. We'll go full circle this time. The principles are gonna be the same. Once we've established them, we're using them then in the opposite on the way back up. You good to go all the way? Sure. You want to go all the way? <laughs> okay. So we lower down. It's like a half of a star, and then half of a shoulder stand. We free the foot as that continues to go back up. We do have one additional point of support here, which is we have a hand-to-hand -hand grip that becomes available in this moment for the second half of the star rotation. And that's probably the piece that's gonna help people out the most. We'll take a look at that one last time. From the shoulder stand. Same way. Yep, as the rotation comes in, I can hold on to the leg here, so I'm holding on to one leg and one arm, but then I free my hand by just rotating it, and then we can use that pressure to help find the rest of the rotation because of the shoulder to foot being strong enough to um, support the rest of the extension there. Makes sense, right? Sort of, sort of, is there something that, that while physically it might be something that we have to train to do, is there anything that didn't make sense in that? Hit your space bar tomorrow. I'm mostly looking at you. You were the one that gave me the most puzzled look. You're good? You're good? <laughs> it just cursed silently. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, anyone else questions on that? 
All right, three, two, <laughs> go. Yeah, really monologue. I'll do the same as well, which is one for a few monologue one for it, and then I have increased rotation ability, rotation ability, kind of spread her shoulders up here. Yeah, some people will have really strong monos here. <clears throat> Most people lose lateral stability, and um, so having those extra points of contact are going to help with that. I, I just really need to change it so that the camera that we're talking into gets higher so that in this moment, they're not just looking at the under parts of our chins. Yeah. Well, Tamara and John want to take the other hand away. Right now they're taking the same side hand okay. away, and they need to do the crossbar. Well, it's good. Tomorrow, shift your weight a little more. There you go. A little more. Yeah. Nice work. Layla, I'll wait for you to stop laughing for a moment. <laughs> um, I'll give it a minute. <laughs> All right, Layla and John. In this one, it is okay to look at the base a little bit, but Layla, your head is cranked pretty good looking at the base. I would tuck your chin a bit and look for a little bit more vertical alignment in your spine. Les, could you show us one more time from star down? Yeah, y'all wanna do star down? Sure. Can we do that same method though? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you want to sit in the same angle or? No, it should be good. Make sure you reach across, get a good shoulder stand connection. That makes sense? Yep, I got the thumbs up. That went surprisingly well. Oh, good. Bernard, give just a second between your space bar and your voice. Just give it a half second. But that went surprisingly well. I was able to pick up from that. Like this whole technology works surprisingly well. I'm very impressed with all of it. <laughs> <laughs> nice pork chop, Chris. It looks like you guys got the mechanics of it that time. I would say to Austin, just to kind of help, help the rotate a little more. It's supposed to the further end of the shoulder stand before taking the end of the shoulder stand. Okay. So uh she's trying to you trying to take the shoulder stand like when it's not rotated enough and it's at a really bad angle for Gotcha, gotcha. Take a look, give it one or two more tries, and we'll let this rest. Nice Matt and Athena. Yeah, I'm watching Austin. Yeah. Nice. Looks like there could be more rotation earlier. I think that's going something. Yeah. Yeah. Austin, Danielle, that would be my encouragement for you. Is is that there should be more rotation in the legs before the weight comes into the arms. Cool. All right, on to the next five things. <laughs> yeah, y'all good? You all right, pork chop? 
Okay. Um, any last questions there? Yes, I'm okay. Good. I got thumbs ups. None's last questions. Everyone feels nice and clear on that. Simple, right? The simplest thing you've never done. Um, okay, so with that, um, I want to start to look back at uh, the piece that we were playing with last week. Um, those of you that were not here last week, um, you'll catch up. It will be, you know, however far you get into it, but we're going to look at one pose in particular that we're going to start with. We're going to look at a single transition from it. For those of you that were here last week, this will be a review, but I just want people to have familiar familiarity with this pose. I just want to go foot to hand plus knee in hand to foot to hand. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to take a look at this pose here where we have a uh, foot to hand on one side and make sure it's a foot to hand, not a goofy foot to hand, just a regular foot to hand and then a knee in hand. There's a good amount of pressure that goes into that knee. And then the base pulls those fingers back and the flyer takes the blade edge of their foot and steals that hand from the base. We'll take a look at that again for those of you that were not here last week. And really just take a look at how we steal that hand. Um, can I have you all, actually you're fine. Um, so we're gonna take the foot to hand, we take the knee in hand. And the base can give the leg too. Oh, the base can give a foot so that the flyer can hold on to that for stability as needed. Here, just before the flyer even does their foot, I want the base to just peel their fingers away. Just take a look at how the base opens the grip. And then the flyer brings the foot to their own thigh and then brings the blade edge of the foot to steal the hand of the base. The things to really watch out for here are to make sure that as the foot and hand come into connection, that we don't get any interference between the blade edge of the foot, pinky, and the fingers of the base coming in to interfere at all. So as the flyer brings that, hand, that foot along the leg and steals the base, we just wanna make sure that it's not too close to the toes, that it's far enough by the side of the foot that we're not gonna rip a toe off accidentally. Make sense, everyone? Was that good foot modeling? Did you like that? Good foot modeling? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right, I'll work on it. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, so again, you can use the fly, the basis foot flyers as additional points of support as you're doing this, but we should all be moving from that balance into a foot to hand. Three, two, and go. <laughs> Look for people that are set up not in foot to hand. Looks like everyone is. Probably it's not going to be too much worry as we're receiving hands because we're seeing the photo stuff. So I don't see a few more warriors like last time I saw. Right. There's two orange squares. Um, one. This one is not this one. Yeah. Uh, there's three people on that one. Um, they're in Denver Boulder. Oh, nice. Please feel free to ask questions. The one consistent thing that I'm seeing is, is that uh, there are a number of flyers that are putting too much weight forward into the knee as they're bringing the second foot in. And so that leg is no longer being stood on. It's collapsing as you bring the second foot in. So while there is good amount of pressure in the knee to hand connection, 
when the foot comes in, you're almost taking a half step backwards to straighten the leg that used to have a knee hold on to it. Could you repeat what you just said? Yeah, so rather, don't let the weight dump forward as you're moving the, to the foot to hand. Um, a lot of people are letting that knee to hand connection collapse as they're bringing the second foot in. It's all going this way. But instead, as you bring that second foot in, you want the leg that you're standing on to go backwards as you're bringing that second foot in. So there should be this action of feeling like you're stepping into extension rather than like I'm stepping forward into something, which is where most people are failing, is they're stepping forward rather than this idea of stepping in almost a backward extension with that standing leg that used to have a knee connected. And Sam did a really good job of pausing with before you committing weight into the new hand, uh, just showing that it's a point where you can really, really establish quite a control here, because it's still mostly in my right hand. Mm -hmm. All right, that's looking better. Come on in. You'll have more chances. It's all right, Melissa. No one's watching. Quickly. Nice. All right, last attempt. Looking better. Good. All right. Any questions there? Nuns? All right. Looking good. Um, we all show that one more time. I'm going to have uh, Chris and Sham <laughs> and Sam show this one more time uh, just to take a look at that moment of when the weight is coming out of the knee. That there can be a pretty good pause here. And then the leg steps backwards as this leg is still just establishing. Cool. All right, that was looking better. For this next piece, what we're going to do is, is we're going to end up coming into a, uh, a foot from our foot to hand. Um, the base is going to bring their elbows to the ground, and flyers are going to come to a squat on one side. Just going to squat. Yeah, and, uh, and in that squat, we're going to go ahead and release a foot and turn a hand kind of thing. So base is going to have the elbows on the ground, flyer is going to come to a squat, and then the flyer is going to turn their hands to the base's wrists. And then we're going to move to this position here, which is really what I want us to get to. All right. Will you turn um, 90 degrees or 180 degrees? Yeah. Oh, this is what they've been waiting for. Uh, that's what they've been waiting for. <laughs> uh, hold <Yeah>. on. <laughs> okay. I'll lift the camera. <laughs> the people they want. Now they can't see you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So they come to a squat. And then here, Sam is going to take and she's going to cross her arms to either wrist. And what that's going to do is it's going to set up some stability in this line here as this foot comes out of the hand. And then there's kind of a, a perched squat on this side. And then this arm just gives some stability. And that's all I care about is just to find that moment. And I'm really supporting the base's stability with my hands by pushing down with both hands, pushing him into the ground. And we were finding that when I'm removing this foot, um, for us, it seemed best when Chris just let go of me instead of pushing me over. Mm -hmm. Can you do it again with the other direction? Yeah. Like 180? Mm -hmm. Like the other angle? The first angle. Oh, it's a Sam. <laughs> Sam, are you removing your foot as you're twisting, or are you removing it and then twisting? Uh, let me talk through it. Okay, so first I squat. I go the direction I'm, the foot I'm gonna land on, that's the one I reach back and hold that ankle, and the other one I reach in front. And now I can twist, 
and that kind of brings my weight into the back leg and then i'm going to push down with the hand over here and lift the foot out that makes sense okay so Alternatively, what we can do is is this um, come back into a regular position or in this way. And give me feet. We can just be moving into our foot to hand where we have our connection points right here. Turn a little bit more this way. And so what I have is I have a foot to hand, and then my second foot is perched along the forearm. And then I have my arms that are connected to the base's arm. And so we end up in a position that's looking like this. I'm holding onto the base's arm, and then I have two feet on the other base's arm. Two hands. Uh, two hands on the other base's arm, you know, the shoulder feet. Um, so essentially we're trying to get to that squatted perched pose. Ideally, we're doing it from the foot to hand. If you want for your first attempt to try to just climb into it from the ground, the way I just showed, feel free, try that, but then go from your foot to hand and try to transition into this perch. Ready, set. Sam, it's nice to see you, but I'm going to turn your, um, monitor off I can find you here yeah. ah, you did it thank you send her a message yep say hi she was actually very much Yeah, Patty. Yeah, Chris and Patty. That looked good. <laughs> Matt and Athena, that looked good. Floor chop, is it, does it feel like you can't squat any lower? Is that what it feels there? You might have to get closer to the mic. Lutz, my arms are too short to reach him, even if I'm in like a full squat. Uh, he has arms that can extend. He can always reach to you. But he's holding on to my feet. Oh, um, let me see what you got. Show me again. Um, pork chop, the one that's going uh, behind, go for that one first. If you can't reach both arms, that one is probably going to be more useful for you. Can you reach it now? Well, you can't talk, so. Yeah, and then can you reach it once you're twisted? There we go. Nice. Yeah, all right, that looked good. All right, I'm with you. Melissa. Melissa Bernard. What does the, so we're getting into the perch from the foot to hand, and then the, I have my two feet and one hand on one of his arms. What's the other hand, what's my other hand doing? So your other hand has options. Right now I care about one of your hands being on his other arm, and then your second hand can be on that arm also, or it can be on the foot with your other, or on the hand with your other two feet. Either way. Looking good, Paul and Nadav. Hey, Paul, good spot. Yeah, they've been using that <laughs> mattress well. Nice, Rochelle and Moshe. Got a question over here. I'm with you. Cassie. Um, I'm having trouble reaching Ben's arms because his arms are wide and my arms are short. 
Um, any solution? Yeah, so we were just doing that with pork chop. Um, so uh, can you see Sam? Yep. So when you cross the arms, the one that would be behind, go for just that one. So if you have to twist a little, you can grab the, uh, the wrist that you're going toward. And then once you twist, you might be able to reach the second one. Um, okay, I'll try that. Your weight on is the more important one to stabilize. Okay. Great, give this just another attempt or two. Um, Eric, can you move your camera closer to you? You have such a wide lens that you're small. <laughs> 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 that you're small in it. I would love to see you larger. Yeah. <laughs> very nice, very nice, very nice. All right. Come on in or give it your last attempt. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Thanks. That looked good. That work out, Cassie? Ben? One more attempt, one more. Perfect. Thumbs up, yeah, thumbs up. up. Cool. I had to uh, lift my arm like quite a bit. Okay. Uh, the, the other arm quite a bit to make it work, but it worked. Okay, yeah. that works. We're going there anyway, so that's fine. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, all right, so now I want to take a look at, um, at uh, some monolimb shoulder stand just as a monolimb shoulder stand to see if we can just get an arm free on either side. So we're just going to play with some monolimb shoulder stand drills. Can you keep that disconnection so that Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to keep both arms on both of our bases arms, but we're going to shift to one side. We're going to let that arm come all the way free. We're going to bring that arm back in. We're going to do that on the second side. And then on this next round, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to shift the base's arm all the way to the base's hip and then all the way back to the shoulder. And then same thing on the second side, arm all the way to the base's hip and then all the way back to the shoulder. Cool. That's it. Just looking for that. And then bases, if you want, when your hand is moving toward your shoulder, you can take and you can flip that grip so that you can get a little bit more biceps involved and then flip it back to the shoulder stand. So as you go to the hip, you can flip your grip and then just straight back. Make sense? <laughs> yeah, makes sense. No, doesn't make sense. Sort of makes sense. All right, let's do it. All right, three, two, Don't worry, I can hear all of your claps. And then maybe from there to the foot to hand. Yeah. To the, to the knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoulder stand to the knee. Yeah. Yeah. Looking good. Tamara, tuck your chin just a little bit. Don't have your head cranked so much looking down. See if you can bring your spine to more neutral and your cervical spine. 
and can you give me a little and then Riley um, relax your shoulders a bit more yeah Riley relax your shoulders a bit more yeah I think that they are doing that because of their spotter I would like their camera to be on their spotter to be where their spotter is and then Paula reach for the front of the knee not behind the knee Rochelle don't let your elbows go so wide in your jump Nice, nice. Melissa, consider bringing your hand up to the wrist before you move it away. This is my play every time I go, oh crap, I'm stuck to his elbow and then I travel with him. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. Unnecessary attachments, Melissa. Unnecessary attachments. And have y'all do one where after you make connection with the first foot, the hand with the second foot comes to the ground. Okay, you do that first? You do that last. That'll be the last thing we show. Cool. All right. Nice Give it your last attempts. This is just a calibration anyway. Just a calibration anyway. So you're just failing to the ground? No, no, no. We'll do that last. Oh, yeah. We're going to go to the knee thing. Mm -hmm. Put hands the knee. Yeah. Uh, to put the hands on the knee. Did you catch the foot first? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, that looked great. Any questions there? Y'all made it look easy. It's not easy, but you made it look easy. All right. <laughs> it's okay. I can't hear your grunts and struggles because of your mutes. So you make it look easy. I'm not saying it sounded easy, but it looked just, it looked easy. Also, there's a little bit of lag on the uh, video and it really smooths everyone out a little bit. It takes some of that, that like, stuttering out of our practice this screen so it's kind of nice everyone looks like you're moving very fluidly very fluidly um, so what we're going to do now is, is we're going to take that shoulder stand and we're going to start to shift it toward that first position of foot to hand plus foot to knee and we're going to see if we can land there from the shoulder stand cool so they come up into their shoulder stand they think about that model in shoulder stand. Flyer continues to hold on to that arm and then brings their foot across to the foot to hand and they're gonna come toward this position. Right? No big deal. It's just really hard. Um, again, we'll take a look at that shoulder stand. I don't know if there's anything you want me to say or anything you want to add. Um, I'm doing a lot of the directing with my arms. So when we come here, I'm holding Chris's arm here and bringing my foot and putting it in his hand and then helping guide it to the ground. I mean, yeah. And then I'm switching my hand to his other arm and pushing down, straight down into it to lift myself up. As that push down happens, her knee is bent moving to where his hand will be reaching for that knee anyway. Yeah, Sam and I played with this a couple different ways and we decided it was a lot easier when it's flyer led as opposed to me trying. I don't move beyond the range that Sam uh, really lets me. <laughs> yeah, and what it is, is is that we have such a precarious balance that is that is pretty hairline here that if the base starts to make a lot of movement underneath the flyer, there's a lot of recalibration that needs to happen from the flyer above that line. 
And so instead, if the flyer just takes and maneuvers the base and does most of the rotation and movements themselves, it tends to create a more stable position for, uh, for the flyer by stabilizing their base rather than the base trying to find the support underneath the flyer. So you can play with it, but uh, if it starts to feel like you've lost a lot of stability bases, see if you can have your flyer do more of the work to put you into position. And I'm pressing down hard. Whenever my arms are on Chris's arms, I'm pressing into the ground. And it's just really important that I'm pressing straight down into a stack. That creates a lot of stability. If I press down hard, not quite straight, then that creates a lot of instability. Any questions there? All right, we're gonna show it one more time. And the reason why I wanna show this one more time is, is that if it doesn't get all the way there, this is what I want it to look like. Can I ask a quick question before they go? Oh yeah, go ahead. What are you doing between the two of you to stay stacked? Cause I'm imagining that when I try and bring a foot down, it'll create like a fuck storm of opposite tensions that I'm not trying to deal with, right? I mean, it, it could, you know, it's like a, you know, we were in our um, free start earlier and we're bringing our feet to the opposite hands kind of thing. And we're trying to figure out how, if I bring my foot across my body, where does the weight in the shoulder to foot start to reinforce or lose connection on one side? And so that's kind of the training for this is, is that now we're just doing that in the shoulder stand. And as we're bringing that across, can we still figure out where the line of support is? Can I still feel the base of shoulder all the way underneath that hand and make sure that I'm only staying on top of the line of foundation that actually supports me. Yes, it's called, it's called a fox song, that's correct. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I just accidentally named it. Okay. Uh, and, um, and then uh, because I don't want us to like break fingers or toes on the way through this, um, I want us to at least have an exit that can go simply to the ground. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to establish that foot to hand connection, but then the second foot, just bring it to the ground. And that's what Chris and Sam are going to show here is just a variation that goes into the inversion. Still establishes that same mono shoulder stand, supported mono shoulder stand, still gets the foot to hand. As that comes to the ground, the flyer then just simply steps to the ground. And as you're navigating the mechanics of this, let that be a restful place that you can go to learn where the stability comes rather than having an arm wrestling match or just fighting each other all the way through this, trying to get that knee connected. You get the rest of it. You get as far as they did in that last one where the foot comes to the ground, it will not be hard to get to that next piece. But if we're panicking in that last moment, a lot of shit can turn into that shit storm or fuck storm or whatever the hell you called it, Danielle. <laughs> um, Danielle, the, I don't know if you can see it because of where my body is, but also I'm bending my leg. I'm not trying to do this with a straight leg. If I were, then I would need to come more off stack to counter that test. Yeah. You could so, they're, so they're both bent and the leg, the top leg is just staying tall? Yeah, I'm using the top leg to kind of find balance in the bottom leg. Horizontal 90 degrees. He's hitting the side as well. So I feel like she's Hold on, one second. Too many people talking here. Uh, what was that, Pork Chop? They're doing what I want. Okay, cool. Excellent. Can you show more of Sam's feet and less of Chris's shoulders? Yeah. Agreed. This Go ahead, I'm going to work with the camera. <laughs> so that was coming to the knee. But you see what's happening is, is that the leg that's not coming to connection, that leg stays on top and is able to figure out where the vertical line that supports her is, and that leg stays over that line. The leg that is coming down to make the connection is bent, and then the one that's staying up bends, but that one doesn't matter as much. You can do what you need to as long as that one stays up over center. All right, give it a shot. Develop some questions in four, three, two. Oh, 
Um, One lah, dua lah. Cool. Uh, da, 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 da. I just want to make sure that when you talk, that you're understanding, and when you're talking and looking, that that like that's where the microphone is. Good slow movement. And again, Riley, just keep on working to keep your torso nice and strong and your shoulder nice and soft. Soft shoulder, strong torso. And even now, Riley, let some bend come into your legs. Let your knees bend a bit. Bring that center down. And like, as you bend your knees, let your movements go slower. Yeah, it's not, a lot of players aren't using their, the way their butt behind to kind of balance their legs coming down. So they're all, they're all too late heavy. The ones I'm with, yeah. All too front heavy. Yeah, it's interesting because the hand holding the arm you're going to, when you push against it, it also helps you not fall into it. Mm -hmm. uh, push. Yeah, it's probably kind of a, a difficult angle to push into, so I don't think you really support most of your body. You got to kind of balance them if you're about to rest. I'm with you, Eric. You're very sexy. How's it going, Paula? <laughs> I just want to remind everyone in this moment, as I see a lot of people talking to their partners, is to speak kindly to each other, looking for solution-oriented communication, that we are not looking at blamey, and we are not looking at um, frustration, I mean, we can look at frustration, but let's not put a spotlight on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so part of it we were over here is figuring out that in that mono shoulder stand, that if I'm controlling a lot of the mono because I'm in a straddle with the outside leg that's then going to move across, that as soon as that leg moves across, my weight shifts out of that mono and puts too heavy in there. So I think we're going to try it a little more more straight so that my torso is over causing the mono and that way this leg is free to move that's yeah that sounds great and and i would one of the things that we're observing the most over here is that most flyers have too much weight in the front of their body and so as they're bringing that leg down and across it's just exaggerating that weight in the front of the body and so either a really strong abdominals by keeping the hips over the shoulders and not letting it come forward, or you can be lazier about it and let the hips move back in a bit of a counterbalance and letting the inversion not stack vertically, but it, let it go a bit over so that when we bring the leg, the leg down forward, we're still in balance. That has not been my problem. <laughs> Congratulations. Danielle, what's, what's the problem? Do it again, Danielle, do it again. I don't know, but I keep falling over Jay's head because I can't tell what I'm doing. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, I think I'd recommend staying centered over that supporting mono shoulder stand hand for as long as possible, Danielle. That was good. It was just in the other direction. That, that was yeah, um, I would actually say um, in that case, uh, Jay's arm is pretty high there. And so the point of contact where the foot and hand meet is really close to your body, which brings the rest of your body well over Jay's head. So I would encourage you to try making the contact lower and further away from Jay's head so that your whole body can Lower shift. to the ground? 
Yeah, yeah. So like Jay's arm is coming really high. Make it lower so it's like also further away from his head. Yeah. Is the, the connection point is pushing you over his head. I'm with you, Rochelle. Okay. Um, okay. So what I'm experiencing is when I'm shifting the into the shoulder stand into the mono shoulder stand with the arm that's coming out. When I, as soon as I try and bring the leg across the body to that hand, I'm feeling a lot of resistance in the hand grip of the open hand from my base, from that hand of my own. And it hurts. It hurts where? Um, All right, it hurts your hand. So, uh, so and, you're, and that hand is holding a, a wrist? It's the hand that moved from his, mid forearm up to his wrist uh -huh. and then it's as the the hand grip feels like it needs to change into something different because i feel like i'm fighting there's too much tension there to where it needs to go and it's so, painful so keep it in an underhand grip don't let it flip this way keep it like the keep it in uh, an underhand uh, shoulder stand grip let that go away and that's still going to give enough stability that you should be able to bring your leg down and not sacrifice the stability that you gain from that connection okay thank you mm -hmm. Chuck, did you have a question or are you just watching oh i'm just watching everybody trying to i yeah i don't know all right give it one last attempt we're gonna take a look at it one more time Start to bring your partners down. We'll come in. Do you want to show me the thing? What's up? Are we going to try and go up to you? Oh, no. Yeah. Um, but I like playing with that um, with that mid range. Mm -hmm. Plus, my struggle is um, twisting enough to get my foot into an appropriate orientation for him to grab. Is there a way that I just don't have like good twisting mobility? Yes. Uh huh. Is there a way he can help me? What is what uh -huh. is the so Chris? What you can do with the hand is is you can rotate. It doesn't all have to come from your flyer. Yes. The hand that's on my shoulder. Right. But really, both of them. You have this to make up. Um, the one that's on the shoulder is going to be the most useful one, but the other one will also be rotating toward um, you as well. But yeah, uh, the rotation doesn't have to come all from the flyer. Yeah, if you uh, pork chop for the for the flyer's legs, you're like you're in a, you're just coming here. You don't have to like actually twist all the way around to put your hand. You just have to be able to come like just here, basically. I don't know if that's at all useful. It's okay. We're gonna look at it in the demo. All right. Um, so I just want to make sure that we have a good collection of all of the questions before we start giving the answers. Nice, Danielle and Jay. Um, uh, so, questions? Any others? It seems like the most consistent thing is, is that people are coming down too far forward too quickly. Uh, Tyler, Riley, what you got? Uh, we're just having difficulty getting that flyer foot to the base hand. Okay, and then is that uh, you feel like it's coming too fast or out of reach or? Not too fast, just out of reach. I I'm trying to keep my arm relatively straight because uh, I think that it's 
easier for the flyer to get her foot there, but we can't seem to make that connection. Let's do a couple of things. Um, any other questions before we move on to these things? Uh, yeah, Jay. Uh, yeah, we noticed that instead of her grabbing my wrist, if she kind of slid her arm down in my bicep more, that kept her arm in front of her and let her get her foot down in my hand when my hand was out and down more, which really allowed the step thing to happen. Where uh, prior to that, when she was holding on to my wrist, we felt too condensed and we'd lose it. We didn't, yeah, we couldn't reach it either. And then once we moved the hand, like I let my hand slide down to the bicep as it comes out or as it moves towards the foot, I slide my hand down and that made it a lot easier for us. Gotcha, gotcha. And then pork chop, this would probably not work as well for you in your proportions, but yes, cool. Um, so um, I have a, I tried the bicep thing and I couldn't reach because my arms are kind of short. So I just moved my hand like halfway down John's forearm and it worked pretty well. Awesome. Fuck yes, fuck yes, fuck yes. Um, all right, so what I'd like us to play with are a uh, couple of ranges of motion. Um, uh, can I base you in one first? Sure. Um, and then, and then y'all want to go through that range of motion we're talking about. Yeah. So uh, for those of you that are feeling like you're not getting uh, quite enough to, to get there, that you need a little bit more, um, you know, for the people that are feeling like, well, it's not coming down too fast, it's like not getting there. Uh, shoulder stand range of motion, um, on our shoulder stand range of motion. My right range of motion? Uh, no, my arm range of motion. So as you come to this side here, what I can do is I can take my flyer and turn them toward the position that we're moving to. It doesn't have to be that the flyer does all the rotation. Now you go ahead and do it. This is me holding neutral and the flyer doing the rotation. <laughs> it can be difficult. Okay, let me closer. So I just want people to go through an exercise and you can go to either shoulder you want and have the base do the rotation, have the base do the rotation. <laughs> And then Chris and Sam, you want to show the other range of motion? That's the best angle. Do you want to turn your legs like that way, maybe? So that like this way? Yeah, so that. And then this is going to be complicated, but what we're going to seek is, is to see if we can get through a range of motion here that starts to play with uh, do we know where the balance starts to falter, and can we just stay in the place where that balance? is maintaining tension. And so we're gonna go only through the mid range of this and not go too far. So the foot and the hand move toward each other and then right back up. And so that we don't have to feel like, oh, we must make connection, which is where a lot of people are starting to hit their rupture. So rather than even thinking about making connection, we're just moving toward that connection and then letting it go. So I want everyone to just take another round and give that an attempt. There's a few of us that are already getting all the way through this transition, but few enough of us that let's see if those two exercises help us. Base range of motion, seeing if we can get some of that rotation for the flyer, and then the flyer base range of motion, seeing if we can get to the place where the connection point is going to happen, but then just not take that bait and just let it go right back up into the inversion. Cool? So just spend a couple minutes, try that again, and then we'll move on to the next piece. Three, two. Very strange to like have the camera here and I'm just like off to the side. <laughs> I think we're gonna have a double earlier. We can get the catch camera while they were talking to you. So it just seems to be uh, right now to like my eye on that. Yeah, that's what I think. Nice. I still feel like in the arm 
that y'all have still connected hand to arm, but is not holding a shoulder, that free arm, there's too much tension that is inhibiting rotation in a few of us. So see if that can loosen up a bit. Flyers, can you bring that arm closer to the front of your body and not let it be so rigid that it is, uh, that the balance is hindering on it or hinging on it? That was one thing I was feeling with us, Sam. Yeah, I have a Okay. And then Tamara, flip your grip, put your fingers pointing down. Nice pork chop and Chris. Kelly, you're killing it. Eric, you're looking lazy, but Kelly, you're doing great work. <laughs> Kelly's like eating jelly beans in the corner. <laughs> what do you think, Athena? Does he got a good point? <laughs> no thumbs up. It's all right. Matt, I'm sure it was, you know, somewhat useful. Ooh. Yeah. That's beautiful, Athena. That looks so good, Matt Athena. Nice. Great. All right, give it your last attempt. We'll come on in. Uh, they start at 4.30 or 6.30? Yeah. Abu Dhabi, I think, starts at 6.30. All right. Nice work. Come on in. We've done the easy part. Now let's do the hard part. <laughs> All right. So, um, so whether or not that was executed, you know, from one pose to the next, all the way through is less important than the idea of like, do I have the ability to know how to approach this type of training? And that's the more important thing that we can glean from this. So if you can take that away from it of like, do I know what mid-range balance is working well? And do I know how to start to explore edges from there rather than I am feeling edge of balance the entire time and none of this feels comfortable? And when you get to that point where nothing feels comfortable and you feel like you're at the edge of balance and all of this is, uh, you know, a high stress situation, how can you dumb it down to something that is at a core essence, uh, just a single pose with a little bit of range of motion? And then from there, how do we expand it and start to find greater ranges of motion on either side of that? Core balance? Okay, it's, it's Hey, Danielle, you unmuted yourself if you can, you got it, cool. But that's what I would like people to be able to really walk away with is, is that approach rather than that trick. All right, that said, let's look at the next trick. Um, uh, what we're going to attempt to do is now go from that squatted foot to hand position into the shoulder stand inversion. Um, so this is, I think, the more challenging way to do it. Let's see how we do. So, um, if you can mute yourself, please, Jade. So they're in their squat. They reach for the shoulder stand, and then they're going to leverage all the way up into the shoulder stand position. Don't worry. That's the only time you get to see it, and now you all have to try it. Um, all right, you want to see it again? 
Yeah. All right, let's take a look at that again. They come off to the squat. Base reaches the hand for the shoulder and the flyer brings that hand to the shoulder. And then the flyer stands up into the foot and they have to press through that foot to hand connection and press through that arm to hand connection or hand to arm connection into the shoulder stand. And so we're trying to find those leverage points. Now, the funky thing here is, is that if they get into that position and then the flyer starts to extend the leg into the hand, you're going to push that base's arm away from you and it's going to discourage the transition into the inversion. And so there's this gathering, there's this, there's this tucking in energy that needs to happen from the flyer so that the base can leverage the foot to hand not extended away from them but coming into them so that they can push that in to the inversion that's going to be the tricky part and that's will be like where we hit our stress moment do they have the ability to still find that leverage into the inversion and not extend away from each other all right so take a look at that um will you turn can, can, lux can you turn in this direction like that well, yeah, if you center them a little bit more because the grid of other people is blocking them. Oh, you can turn them off grid mode. You shouldn't be looking at people in a grid. You should be looking at just the spotlight video, everyone. Um, you, you're, fe you're free to look at everyone else, but like for the best you ability. She's talking about the, like the six ones that are on the side in the normal. The view, there's still some squares on the right side of the screen. Sorry, I missed that. But this is the part that I really care to look at. Um, and sorry, I lied. It's the other foot that I really want to take a look at. So turn in the complete opposite direction from what I said. Because it's this arm that I really care. I want everyone to look at how we're using this arm. Not even that much. All right, we're going to do one last time. And then I want us to look at how this is gathered. And there kind of two different ways to apply it. I'm not sure that we're applying it the way All right, so they perch, they free the arm. That arm is coming up toward the flyer's shoulder. Flyer is helping out with that as they come into this moment here. You see how the, well, the flyer started off with a bent knee so that that could be pushed up over center. And that's the part that matters. If the flyer is going to extend the legs, it is important that that extension happens uh, at the flyer's hips, not at the flyer's foot. All right, so I'm gonna show what that looks like. Move out of the way for a moment. And so the idea is, is that we're in this position here, and what I wanna make sure is, is that we're not extending through the foot, but we're extending through the hip to get into the inversion. And so that would be the thing that we're looking at, is, is that as we move into that position, I just wanna know that as we're getting into extension, that it's moving in this direction, not in this direction. This is where we see most people go, is that the, the leg kicks the arm out instead of pushing through that arm's foundation into our inversion. So make that distinction in your transition. Does that make sense? All right, prove it. Show me yours. <laughs> I'll show you yours. You'll show me mine? Wait. <laughs> yeah, because you go through a straight leg, but you just use your line efficiently. Yeah, well, there's the version where the base lifts their arm and stacks the flyer, but that is, I really don't want that. Yeah, we found that in the That's also very difficult. Right. Yeah. And honestly, either way, it just. It, it's just like, are you going to kick the foundation out from under you? Yeah, Melissa. Or are you going to use it? Bernard, you can lift that arm a little bit as you biceps curl it. The one that's still, yep, that one. So that's, that's kind of flyer's choice, which like they lift first. And one requires the base to lift the arm and other requires the flyer to have a really strong yeah, to be strong and flexible.
Good. Now, Melissa. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, the arm has to go to my shoulder. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That piece. That piece. How are you supposed to do that part? Um, and so uh, as that's happening, don't extend your arm also. Bring that hand to your shoulder. Think model limb shoulder stain. You already got it. And then you can just let the rest of the pieces glide in. What's up, Danielle? Like I could get the hand to my shoulder, but then my foot is still on the ground. Even though my hips are up, my foot's still on the ground and getting like stacked over was like really hard. Yeah, it is really hard. Very hard. How do you get, <laughs> how do you get that foot off the ground though? Um, well, you have to be able to get yourself into a good enough stack, right? So as this- Sorry, the peanut gallery is laughing at me. <laughs> Can you say that again? What happens there, like Sam has to get into a really strong stack there and is using this arm to push as part of that leverage to get the legs up. And then Chris is pushing back into that also. He's even lifting his elbow off the ground a little bit, but maintaining good, strong tension through that. Let me see yours, Danielle. Does Chris have his arm shaved? No, Chris's arms are hairy. Is he talking about having the skin, the skin be rubbed? I imagine yeah. that he has some hair pulley stuff going on. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting a waxing on both arms. Well, tip your, tip your waxer. Sam is gripping me pretty securely, and so I don't so, think. So Danielle. You're losing your arm connection on your right arm, on Jay's arm. Maintain that connection. I'm with you, Eric. What's up, Eric? Kelly? Uh, We'll unmute you. But I think you still have to do it. We can only suggest it. There we go. We're having trouble uh, transitioning all of the weight out of my right arm to get to the mono. Uh, we've gotten to the point where Kelly is fully extended through her right arm with connection with my right arm, but can't quite get all the weight into my uh, mono shoulder stand on my left hand. All right, give me a give me a view. Let me see. <laughs> uh, also, uh, Kelly and Eric, your video just cut out, so I cannot observe you. Do you want to try one or the other when you stack me? Sure. All right, they're back. Let's <laughs> Kelly and Eric, your video came in just for the last moment and then cut out right before you went into the inversion. Sorry. That's nice too. Yeah. I mean, I still feel like it's very similar to what we heard in that video. It's a lot easier to apply. Um, much, much, much easier. Mm, okay. uh, yeah, I can't help you with uh, your technology, but I can help you if you get your technology to work. Uh, give it your last attempt, and then we'll circle around again, or grid around again. <laughs> I'm watching you, Kelly. Thanks, Matt and Athena. Your video is working. Welcome back, Bernard and Melissa. Back. Oh, you, you're, you're muted again. It's looking like it almost, no, can't quite get that foot out. Y'all are really close. So, Athena, you're still muted. so at this point, like, I think you have a lot of the right technique. Kelly, you can try to roll your hips a little bit more over stack 
Um, and to play with overbalancing your shoulder stand so that you have that as a, as a safe place to be. Um, so rather than your shoulder stand being completely vertical, it can be slightly past. Um, and then uh, there's going to be something in, and I might need you to turn uh, 45 degrees so that I can see what's going on with that foot. Honestly, mostly I was watching the shadow on the wall behind you to see that that foot was still connected. It looked like you were already into the inversion. I think it's the other way that I want you to rotate because I think I need to see the right arm. That's the foot that's still holding on to. I, I'm having trouble getting back more. Like I'm trying really hard to round back, but I can't get further. So I don't know if you have any tips for that. Uh, so, and then the other thing that I'll have you take a look at in your foot to hand grip is the angle of the wrist is the, Eric, if you can get a little bit steeper in that, maybe you help rotate it a little bit more. And if it's flat, it's moving away from where the balance is trying to go. So see if you're also reinforcing that with the wrist, which is what I couldn't see in the last one. Okay. Um, Matt and Athena, I think you're unmuted now if you had the question there or a comment. No, I don't think we have any comments. <laughs> we did, but never mind. I want to hear Athena's comment. <laughs> All, right. All right, Sam, I was just saying that we had. All right, so. Yeah. Uh, hold on, I'm going to have. Yeah, will you mute Kelly and Eric? Excellent. So, Kelly and Eric. What you got going on is your angles look like this. You have the shoulder stand that's in this position and your foot to hand that's in this position. And the whole thing needs to shift like this. So biceps curl strongly and bring the hand over the shoulder so that this is in a stack here and that it's moving toward that stack there. From there, all the methods that you're already using should work. Your elbow's coming off the ground a little bit, your elbow's bending to get underneath a little bit, the uh, Kelly is doing a good roll into it. I think mostly at this point, if you just get your alignment, you're going to get into this inversion uh, without it um, without it stalling out because of the angles. Make sense? Thumbs ups. Cool. I wasn't sure if you were just opening your Superman chest or if you were thumbs upping. Now I get it. <laughs> um, all right. So, questions. <laughs> yeah, I got where Melissa just was a second ago, because that's where I got stuck too. Uh, and we were getting it, and then now it's regressed, which is the most annoying thing in the entire world. Which happens. You're at the end of a two hour practice. Usually, when I learn something new and like involve new muscles into my practice, I only have a few in me my first day of doing them also and then resting for a couple of days or even a few hours and coming back to it is usually a much better approach than continuing to try to you know cram when things start to falter in their quality um uh the thing that i would encourage of everyone is to look at their alignment Every time, I mean, we have the flyers that are in a squat, twisted with their arms twisted and moving uh, from that twist out of it into a balance. We have the bases that are trying to fight so many forces that are putting angles of force into them at, at too many angles. So the more that we can take a look at all of those angles and start to break them down and say, okay, these three angles here matter the least. Let's give the least amount of attention to them. And then actually these two, or even this one, is probably the one that I need to pay attention to the most. That one, the one that should have the most amount of attention paid to it, is, is the arm that is uh, moving into the shoulder stand, the one that's, that was in the foot to hand, that is reaching for that top shoulder. That arm should be well aligned. Your hand needs to be over the shoulder. If your elbow bends, your hand can still be over your shoulder, so it's okay to bend the elbow as long as the hand is still over the shoulder and not moving over the head or too close to the hips. Establish that. Once you have that established, you establish the next angle that needs to work out well, which is going to be uh, the flyer's spine. And so can we get the flyer's spine over the base's shoulder? 
And there's a number of angles that we have to look for to look at the flyer spine. And each one of us has a different uh, uh, place that we should be focusing on for that alignment. Some of us are doing really good in this part of our spine. Some of us are doing really good in this part of our spine. And some of us are doing really good in this part of our spine. Few of us are doing good throughout all of the spine yet. So start to establish it from its foundation to its extension. This part of the spine should be set first in an inversion. And then we work on this part and this part. So go down that line and see if you can get that angle set. And then you're going to use the biceps curl of the foot to hand that still exists to help reinforce these lines of the spine of the flyer. Um, some of our flexibility in our hips and our hamstrings are going to dictate that we're going to have to use one technique over another. And so depending on where you have strengths or, um, or places that you need to develop greater strengths will dictate, you know, a certain technique that you use. In that we are at the end of our two hours, what I will say is that play with it. Give it a number of attempts throughout this week and send a video. I'm happy to take a look at it and I'm happy to tell you if one of those angles starts to glare as one that needs to have more attention spent on it and I'll give you that feedback. Bless you. Um, and, uh, and then we'll pick it up again next week. Um, what is this one called? The, the fuckstorm. Fuckstorm. Fuckstorm, I guess. We're actually not <laughs> calling it the fuckstorm, but for the confines of this moment, we can wow. call it that so that we can smile internally and know that that's a thing that we've just made up that doesn't really mean anything. All right. Um, any questions for myself, for Chris, for Sam? Torque storm. I like torque storm. That works well. I kind of have a question for Sam about what you're doing with your foot that you're pulling up. Uh, when I'm going in the shoulder stand. Um, so there's kind of two ways to apply this. Uh, the way that we demoed, I'm basically just trying to compress as much as I possibly can. Yeah, so in this version, Chris that is- foot, That foot right there that you just took off the hand, like how, do, how are you using it right now? Uh, this one? Uh, the foot that is no longer in the hand, she's using it uh, to, um, what do you call that, adduct um, and push into the side of the arm. Oh yeah, it's not doing much. When I stand up, now that foot is free. And in this version, Chris's elbow stays on the ground. And basically, I'm just gonna like curl. <laughs> I'm just gonna curl up and then like press all the way up. But the the version we didn't really show, which is probably more gonna be more successful for most people, um, is in this moment I'm fully extended, and then Chris lifts his elbow a little bit, and then I just let go with both legs and come into a ball and up. Yeah. And on the opposite side, as this one is pushing up, this one might need to bend a little bit to get underneath it. And our proportions will largely dictate that. So if you have a flyer with um, shorter legs, you might not need to. If you have a flyer with longer legs, you might need to more. Uh, you're gonna see that you know uh, limbs will dictate technique uh, also. Limb length will dictate technique. Um, hooks apply. Um, all right. I just added to you the training tool because the one-legged perch wasn't working for us. So I put my hand on his shoulder to get into a pseudo one-legged perch and then worked on the actual like shoulder standing part. And that seemed to work almost well. I think we, we can make it work. Okay, rad. Rad, rad, rad. Um, also, uh, I don't have all of the tech down yet, but I am recording these and am going to make them uh, available so that y'all can review them and reference them throughout your weekly practices. Um, and also we'll make them available for purchase for people that are on the East Coast and people that are in Europe that are not waking up at this hour for these classes. Um, those of you on the East Coast, I got uh, at least four of you right now that are on the East Coast. You're fucking rock stars. It's after midnight. 
love the hell out of you for being here. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you again. Um, and for those of you that are just waking up in the middle of the night in Israel or in Abu Dhabi, um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I love spending your mornings, my nights with you. And, uh, and for everyone in this time zone or for the people that are in the time zones that are closer to here, um, <laughs> y'all are fucking rock stars and you're on the best time zone. No offense to anyone else. Um, but <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for being here. Um, I'm gonna leave this open. So if you all want to continue to play around for a little bit and watch each other, uh, I'll leave the screens open so that y'all can do that. You can also um, talk to each other. And if there are questions for Chris and Sam and myself, uh, we'll leave that channel open. Y'all can ask questions for the next few minutes while we'll still be around. Um, take a moment, thank your bases, thank your flyers. And for those of you that are fortunate enough, thank your spotters. Thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Love. Um, thank you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Reach out, ask questions. Um, please also feel invited and encouraged to give feedback. I'm still working on the system. This is only our second week of doing it. So the cameras and all of that stuff will get more refined over the next week or two. Um, and, uh, and thank you all so much. A lot. Your, oh, by the way, so much better camera work from everyone this week. It looked much better. Everyone is getting brighter and easier to see. Diagnosing is much easier um, with your new setups. So keep bringing the lamps out. Keep getting the uh, good cameras out for these things. It's, it makes a huge difference. Um, thanks, all. Thanks a lot. We appreciate you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I wish I could hug you all. Great, Athena. Matt, don't go. <laughs> what did she say? She said, don't go. Said, Matt and Athena, don't go. Oh, I was totally going to go. Sock <laughs> <laughs> monster. Sock monster. Athena, did you have? Awesome. Oh, I had to ditch, I had to ditch the crossed arms. When you do your crossed arms, I noticed that you are able to still slide your foot right out. We're not able to do that. I'm having to lift up that other foot to try and pull it out. And it was, you know, so I just ditched that because it wasn't really working. And I put both hands on the one arm. And it was so much nicer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that was what I do also. So yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Cross arm one because that was in the video Lux sent us, and we thought maybe he wanted us to do. And that, that is the way I originally wrote it. Okay. Yeah. 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 How are you? But I don't understand how you're able to slide your foot right out, like without having to full lift it. Is Chris's hand like awesomely open or? <laughs> So yeah, his hand is really open right here. And I'm actually pushing down with with this hand to uh -huh. kind of lift my leg away and I'm leaning back now. Ah. Okay. Like it doesn't have any weight in it right now. Yeah. Are you are you kind of shifting your shoulders a little bit to provide some counterbalance to allow you to lift the foot? So like right now my shoulders are even. I come over here, I'm like kind of centered over Chris's body, and then I push down to lean back, and now my shoulders are over this arm. Yeah, and your hips do move back, okay. Yeah, um, and then Matt, if that's, if you're finding challenge in that, the foot to hand that you still have, you might need to get really steep with that grip, and then Athena, you might have to tolerate a steep grip on the one that you're still holding which will feel like it's pushing you forward and you're going to want to go back from it. And so Matt, you're going to allow for that counterbalance to go back. You're all protect your wrist by keeping your grip steeper. Right. That makes sense. What I'm feeling is it's, it's the balance is starting to go towards my head and I'm having to actually push the, the squat hand. Mm -hmm. I'm really having to push it away from me a lot. Gotcha. The whole thing's feeling like it's tipping towards my head a little bit. Gotcha. So then you're starting to feel the weight start to move into like this part of the hand more than, and so then Athena, yeah. 
you want to like not only stay particularly focused here, but you might have to even pretend like you're shifting the weight a little bit to here. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was what I kept trying to do. <laughs> but, but really is pretend. You don't really want to shift too much weight here. Um, <laughs> but if it just feels like it's moving too much into toward um, Matt's head, then just thinking about going a little bit to here will at least change the orientation of, of that for you. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how you're, how you're rotating your upper body, Athena, but I'm really thinking about turning like 90 degrees. Like I'm looking at the other hand. I'm not trying to make this shift here, which could inadvertently be moving backwards. I turned and so moving back is moving totally like perpendicular to, to Chris's head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is where I was thinking also yeah. is probably where they're getting that tip toward yeah. the head. Oh, that was the other question I had is that um, in that transition, um, who's leading the rotation of the hand foot connection? Okay. Uh, Nam says her. Because I have a tendency to want to turn it. And I was wondering if I should just do that or wait till I have a definite signal from the flyer to turn it. I don't know that it matters too much, Matt. I think that the most important thing is, is that you have a good foundation in your wrist there. And so if you feel like that works best if you're leading it and that you can feel your flyer follow it, I don't think that will be a detriment. And if you can follow your flyer, if you can follow Athena through this rotation and maintain upward pressure through the right spots and Athena, you maintain pressure in the right spots, then your flyer can lead this no problem. Um, as long as you're both focused on maintaining that integrity, lead follow should be not terribly important in this, that it's a rotation, not something that is moving in, in, a, in the rotation is, is quite narrow. Right. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. We'll work on it some more. <laughs> Ran. Ran. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.